Hello! Right now you're probably following some of my other tutorials wherein I said, drop down the life component. And you thought, what is the life component? The life component is a crutch that I use in almost all of my projects. But I've made some changes to it lately, and decided to share those changes with you. I'm also keeping it a separate video, because it's easier to reference it. Let me explain what it does. Let's say we have a feedback system like this. But we want the points to reset to their original position after an amount of time, we can reset the feedback. But with the life component, we can reset every particle individually. After a set amount of time, Let's get started by creating a base comp. Right click it. Customize component. We need a float called lifetime. Default 10. Minimum 0 0.5 25 maximum Let's create another float called Variance I'm just gonna split my screen, you don't need to do that Step inside the base and open parent parameters. I forgot to add one parameter. So let's customize the component again. And add a momentary called reset. And let's link our keyboard into that. I'm going to keep my pair of parameters here in the corner for easy access. Inside the base, let's create a constant chop. One channel called time step. One called lifetime. and variance. For time step, you can use something like abs time dot step seconds. This will give you the delta time. Now, I don't like using delta time in real time work. If it lags, I prefer if it picks back up where it was. Instead of going where it should have been, but it's a preference. And if you need or want delta time, use it. Instead I like to use me.rate to get the frame rate. And plug in one over me.rate to get the inverse. For the lifetime, let's drag the value from the parent parameter and take the inverse of that expression, 1 slash the expression. And let's just drag the variance here. Nice. Let's drop down a constant top. And connect it to our in. Under Output, set Resolution only. And zero it out. Let's name this zero for clarity. Copy and paste it. And let's name this values. Z 
Both of these can be 32-bit float mono. In the values drag the time step to the red channel. And I'm borrowing the green channel for the lifetime, just so I can copy and paste the expression, and multiply it by the time step in the red channel. Let's connect the zero to a feedback. Connect an add top. And plug the values into the add as well. Drag the add to the feedback. And let's drag the reset from the parent to the feedback pulse. Let's connect this feedback to a threshold. And set it to 1. Connect a mount to the feedback. Not a mouth. A mount. And not to the values. To the feedback. I'm going to use a select to select the zero constant. And plug it into the second input of the mount and the threshold goes into the third input. In the mount, let's set it to red. And we need to swap places, so the zero goes into the first input, the feedback goes into the second input, and the threshold goes into the third. Now, every five seconds, it returns to zero. Let's select the in. Change the pixel format of the threshold to 32-bit, float mono, plus alpha. And drop down a multiply top to multiply the threshold with the input. Let's set it to 32-bit float red, green, blue, and alpha. You don't need to follow along here, I'll just show you what's going on. We've now built a little machine that automatically resets our feedback system every X seconds. That's neat, but not what we wanted. Let's insert a noise after the zero, before the feedback, to stagger the initial positions. Set it to random and change the seed. Now, it's resetting every 5 seconds, but every pixel has a different initial value. But let's also create some variance in the length of the lifetimes. Let's take the values and connect a noise to it. Under output, set input times noise.
Make the period really small. The offset is 1. And for amplitude, let's drop down our variance from the parent. We can translate it a little if we like that. and connect it to the add. And yeah, now we can add variation to the lifetime. I'm renaming this output to life. But we also have this texture. That fades from 0 to 1 over the course of a lifetime. We can use that for many reasons, for example to color our particles. So let's connect that to an out. Let's name it Life Fade. And the other out is named Life. Yeah, I'll see you back in the other tutorial where we actually make something pretty. Cheers.